Today I'm taking you with me into my sewing room in my raw sewing environment so you can come with me and sew a color block dress all the way from the inspiration until it was done. So a little bit different, lots of fun, come and watch. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing If you're new to the channel, you will find a lot of practical sewing content You can see exactly the way I do things All coming back from 30 years of sewing experience I started sewing at 11 years old, I am 41 It has been a whopping three decades <laughs> and I have picked up a lot, a lot of tips and tricks along the way that I love sharing with you here. So if you think that's a cool idea, go ahead and subscribe and join this channel. Also tap on the bell so you don't miss out when there's new videos. I am coming today from the backyard, from the orchid, normal, healthy, alive orchids <laughs> and cricket heaven. I am sure you can hear them. They are everywhere and they are very loud. It's a beautiful day and I thought it would be nice for you to see the sun. It's nice for me as well. I am not getting out much and although I have this beautiful garden, I haven't been able to enjoy it due to bad weather, you know, heat, rain. But as autumn is coming in to this area of the world, Southern Hemisphere, this place is becoming much more enjoyable and I'm very blessed to have this beautiful place here outside my home. Today I'm sharing with you very raw footage i'll just let you know i am in a blue top whatever top i was wearing that day i filmed throughout the day the light conditions in my sewing room are really variable so you're gonna see a lot of change in the light sometimes i look very orange sometimes i look very pale i am shining because i am sweating it is my life i am always sweating so you will see the big difference from my natural self to this self, which has a little bit of makeup and some red lipstick, which is my favorite color to wear. Let's now hop into the raw footage. I am really excited to share with you so you can follow along how I made my color block dress. So let's hop into that. I really feel like I want to do a color block dress. It's not gonna be a difficult make, although it'll take a bit more steps in the planning phase and cutting out, making everything's gonna match up, but actually the sewing's not gonna be hard and it's one of my make nine. Um, I did make a loose make nine or simple knit projects and one of them was the Tessa sheath dress from Love Notions. And I've made it before, I've done the feet adjustments I need so I know the feet is spot on for me. I don't have to worry about that and all I have to do now is find some inspiration and I've got my computer here. So I've opened it on my Pinterest board and I'm always pinning things there. I'm going to take you there so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so this is how my page looks like. It's got my picture, my website there, and then on boards, I have all sorts of things. One of them is Bodycon Inspo, and I've pinned a lot of color block things here um, that, you know, inspire me. So, you know, I always look at this one and think it's really cool. Um, that's one of my favorites, actually. And then these ones <laughs> that have like diagonal type color blocking I always find super interesting. Now I don't really care what brand these dresses are or where they come from, that's not really my interest and I'm not trying to like replicate exactly what they look like. I do just want to be inspired, that's the whole idea. So after looking at these, let me show you this other board. There's one called color blocking. So before coming onto the camera, I did look around here for a few minutes and this one I really like. Uh, this one says it's Bloomingdale's Calvin Klein sleeveless color block maxi dress. I really like these diagonal lines here. I really like that a lot, like that is my jam. I think I can replicate that with Tessa dress. Um, just making sure I mark on the pattern where the bust line, where the waistline is um, on the pattern in comparison to where it is on my body. <laughs> you know, and I know that because I've already made this dress. I think I can get the proportions similar to this where I can get something similar. I don't want a maxi dress. I don't want a dress that flares out, but I do like the way those lines are looking there. And I'll probably do other colors. I'm not interested in these colors. Another one I like is also from Calvin Klein and this is a more simple one. It's got sleeves. I'm really not interested in the sleeves, 
but I do like the black and gray details on this one would even be easier to do much more simple and I really like that style too and there's just so much um, you can play with I could be color blocking the whole year if I wanted to <laughs> look at this one Emelina color block dress from anthropology um, I love that style too but I'm trying to make just a, a normal sheath dress because I'm going to use the Tessa as the base. I've chosen to work on this design here. So that is the front view and the back. I'm not interested in having color blocking on the back as such. So I took my pattern piece from the Tessa dress, the one that already has the feet adjustments that I've already made to that. That would be just half the pattern and I used a lot of scrap paper, made a big paper and just extended a full front. You know, to do those asymmetric lines on a front, you do need the full piece, you know? And I'm doing these lines as I'm going to see this dress. So I'm gonna need to cut all these pattern pieces with the right sides up so that they turn out, you know, in the correct way. Important things to mark here is the bust line. The bust line is marked on the pattern, like a little cross with a circle. I did drop mine and add some length here, but you know, that's very personal, <laughs> the adjustments that you make. So the bust line mark is there, the waistline is there, marked. Because I want those to be there as reference to the lines that I'm doing. So that first diagonal line is gonna start sort of two thirds down the arm side, and then have a slight curve and finish over there. Now, it's really important, and I've marked here, really important that at these places where there's going to be change of color that you mark the stitch line, and that's where you calculate where it's going to join to the back. Same as here on the waist, I marked here the 3 8 seam allowance, and that was the point that I'm matching at the back. So that is the first cut there. Then from the waist, I just drew a curve eyeballing all the way down, and then I just chose a distance below the hip, sort of like halfway from the waist down and just drew another curve or eyeballing or whatever you want to do, you know. Other thing that's important is marking grain lines everywhere. Look, these pieces are going to all come apart and be cut in different fabrics with different colors and you do need these to be correct, right? So I've marked one there, 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 everywhere. <laughs> And to assist me putting this together, before cutting out, you know, before cutting this out, I drew lines there. Just two reference lines there. This curve is bigger, so I have one, two, three notches as such. I don't cut into fabric, I mark. And on this top one, there's one there, one there, one there. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to help you put these pieces back together correctly. So that is the front. I'm not going to be adding seam allowance to my pattern pieces. I'm going to be adding it onto fabric and I'm going to show you how that looks after I've cut it out. This is the back and this is the wrong side of the pattern piece so the printing is on the bottom and this is the way I have to cut the fabric for it to match the color blocking on the front. So I have to put the wrong side of the pattern to the right side of the fabric. I know that's really confusing. <laughs> But basically, this is the one I'm going to cut from another color. So I'm going to get this pattern piece, not on the right side where all the printing is. I'm going to get it like this and put it on top of the right side of the fabric in order to cut it up. And add seam allowance there, add seam allowance there. And it will just be on the one side that this happens. On the other side, the back will be cut normally. Trying to decide what colors to use. I put several of my rayon spandexes here on the table so I could look. Now, I don't recommend rayon spandex for a dress like this if you're not gonna line it, and I am going to line it or else it's gonna be way too thin. I have black lining fabrics, uh, a knit lining fabric specifically that I bought a lot of so I can have on hand. And I'm gonna fully line this dress and I intend to finish the neckline and the armholes with a clean, sleeveless finish you know that I've, I've shown before how to do that and it works just as well for a neat fabric and it'll give the dress a nicer look give it another layer so you're not showing your undergarment lines so I've decided to have red on the top then comes a large area of black then comes medium-sized area of red 
and the little area at the bottom is going to be grey and I like how these three colours come together. I've cut my lining pieces, they're just normal black pieces, they're both on the fold so there is a front and a back and they're just normal, there's nothing going on and actually the feet of the dress is going to be the same with the colour blocked one, all the different colours are just going to be for visual interest. But basically when you're just uniting all those colors together you're just gonna get this again just with different colors you know so I've cut it exactly the same size I haven't cut it smaller or larger this one stretches a little bit less than the rayon spandex but it's still gonna fit my body and I actually think it's nicer when the lining feels closer to the body you know it's more flattering as well <laughs> a little bit more flattering so you're probably looking at this, uh, this is the top, it's sort of upside down, but this is the top. See the neckline, the large black area, other red area, and the bottom is grey. When I wear this, it's going to look on the other side because these are the wrong sides of the fabrics and I have my little notches marked everywhere. And I'm not going to match them all, but I want to match the pieces together with a few pins. When I go to the sewing machine, I'm going to pin this really accurately and I'm going to be serging them together and then sewing. I've left 3 eighths of an inch, so that's what I'm going to use to pull all this together. So I've got the back pieces here and this is the top bit there. The neckline is up there where you can't see. This is the seam I'm going to have at the waist. You can see where there would have been a little dart there that I sort of eliminated here from this area to sort out my sway back. It's going to fit much better. and. Over here you can see there's going to be this area just on one side. So I'm also just going to pin these like that. This is going to be much simpler than the front, there's less pieces. And because it's just full black at the back, that seam won't be really noticeable. So now that I've pinned my back and my front, I can just go and put these together. I'm going to pin everything matching all the notches that I've done. And then I'm just going to serge and sew. It should be pretty fast. Thank you. I've got my son here, he's been reading books and doing things he still has to do anyway and I don't know about the information but they're setting up an online platform for him to do his schoolwork. So he will be busy soon um, but otherwise um, I do have to pay attention to him, he's here all day, you know. <laughs> I've taken the time to pin everything. This is the back and you can see pins there and down there with that color blocking bit there. Um, I pin them quite far away from the edges so I can just surge in one go and don't worry about like taking pins as I surge. And I've done the same with the front here. So the top red bit there, it's angled as you can see. And then that one comes down and that one there. So you already know this one, it's really loud. So I'm being careful to serge without trimming any of the seam allowance off. So I'm serging right on the side and my knife is actually not cutting anything. And if it does, it'll be like a millimeter, like nothing, you know. I was able to serge in one go. And now I can just take them off quickly before going on to the next seam. You can see that little mark right there that matches the one there. So I've got these on every one of these curved seams and it really helps put these color blocking stuff together. Look, you're not going to appreciate how cool this is until the dress is done, but this is the front all surged. And now I'm going to go and do the back. Oh, it's so hot, you wouldn't believe. It's very hot. Um, now that I've sewn the back, I'm going to go ahead and sew the shoulder seams for the dress. And for the lining, the lining I've already shown you is just black pieces, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and do the shoulder seams on the serger. Only the shoulder seams at this point because I'll be doing the sleeveless lining method. And all you need for that are the shoulder seams because the side seams are sewn like at the last stage. So it's just that for now. And that's because I'm doing this construction method. If I was working with a thicker knit and I wasn't lining it, then I would sew the 
shoulder seams and the side seams. But I always adapt the way I sew to the fabric and the technique I'm using. And it's really fun when you can just know what you have to do without following instructions. Sewing free like this is the best fun for me. I know how to sew this, I know how to line it, this, and that only comes from doing it many times. Because when you do a technique many times, it sort of becomes ingrained in your brain. And then you don't really need to look at the steps anymore. And then, yeah, I think it's fun. So I've pinned both shoulder seams and I'm just gonna sew them. So I'm gonna put my dress with dangling side seams over there and get my two lining pieces black back and front. My chair is super squeaky, I hope you can't hear it. Now this lining fabric, I look at it and I look at it and I, I see it the same right and wrong sides. Like I, I don't really care, so I'm just gonna sew them, whatever and it's going to be inside anyway but really there's no difference between the right and the wrong side that i can see you can see this is really stretchy as well i believe this is called trico lining i think okay now i can just go and sew all these seams on the sewing machine i'm going to be using a straight stitch because i like it and you know, the, the dress is not going to be stretching out and like popping when I put it on and stuff. So just a straight stitch um, using a stretch needle. While I'm sewing this dress, I'm um, talking through Facebook with my mum. And I think if you can just talk to people and see them, even if it's on camera, it's really helpful for this time, although we talk all the time. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to be sewing and talking to my mum. <laughs> shoulder seams and now I'm just gonna put the neckline right sides together and just pin them and sew them on the round trim and snip and under stitch <laughs> so all the normal things you do on a neckline you know even if it's neat I still do it turn on the light there because I couldn't see a thing <laughs> so I've done the neckline it's looking really neat really clean the linings in there still the arm side is raw now I'm going to sew one of these first so all I do is open this and then get everything that's in there sandwiched in between these two so you can see this and everything is in there everything's in between now I know here it's going to look very strange so you can go and look at the videos I have on the channel on how to do this but everything is in there, the whole other piece of the dress. So I'm just going to match these shoulder seams and sew this arm side and then flip it right sides out. So to sew these I've just been using a quarter of an inch seam allowance for the neckline and for the arm side. Okay so I've got the arm side there pinned right sides together and I'm just going to sew it. So I'm just going to bring the dress out from under there, through there. Can be a little bit bulky but it'll come out. So at this point I have the neckline all finished and one of the armholes really neatly finished and lined. The other one's raw so I'm just going to open these, get everything in there 
and do the same thing, meet them here with pins, sew and turn around. So I've sewn this other one and now I'm gonna do the same as I did before and just put my hand in there and just start pulling it through. And voila, if I open this, extend it, I have both armholes and necklines really cleanly finished. I'm gonna go press all this stuff and then all I have to do, well, I'm gonna understitch these, of course. You can't understitch the whole thing because the machine's not gonna let you, but as much as possible there. And then you grab this, you meet them there at the underarm underneath, and then you sew in one go the side seam of the lining and the dress, like in one continuous stitch and that's on both sides. So I've surged the side seams here. This is the lining bit. This is the main bit there. You can see on this side seam, it's just black on both sides, front and back. And that's what I really wanted to happen. I always doubt when I'm doing these asymmetry things that I'm gonna cut everything wrong. But you know, just a tip, when you're cutting asymmetric stuff, cut everything with the fabric right sides up. Put the fabric on your body, put the pattern piece as it's meant to be on your body and then cut, you know, double check. So I've searched all that long seam and now I'm just gonna sew it and one of the side seams will be done and then I'll just do the other side. And then basically it's the hems and it's done. Yay, super easy. My husband just brought me a plate of fruit and some crackers. This is papaya. Um, it's very low in sugar and I got used to the flavor. I really like it. So I'm just gonna set it aside and I'll have that once I'm done with this bit, you know? Look at the color of this fruit. It's really orange and it's really juicy and fresh and it's a perfect fruit. Look, in our culture, we have the main meal at lunch. Like that's when we have the main hot meal. In the afternoon, in the evening, we don't have proper food. We just have like something light. <laughs> anyway, this is done, this side seam. So if I turn this, you will see that one armhole is completely closed. This is the inside, the lining. And the other one is still loose. At the arm side, meet the seams under the arm, pin, surge and sew and then it's Don't you think this is starting to wear me You've been raining down like hail on a I have tried to give you my soul But you can't love something You saw how I made it, you saw me wear it in the previous clip and it's just very simple, you know, it, the, the, the main shape of the dress is unchanged, it's just that it has the colors that I wanted based on the inspiration that I got from that Calvin Klein dress. I really think this is a fun process and just lets me make whatever I want and I love that. I think the black here is really flattering and then the red and the gray just make it pop you know it's really careful to match these seams there on the side super careful with that and at the back is very simple you just have that little gray area there and you know I could have gone all out and replicated the same design onto the back but I thought you know what let's just keep it simple let's have all the interest be at the front for this opportunity you know this is not the last time I'm gonna be color blocking <laughs> Please let me know if this is a format that you would like to see. I think this is a format I would enjoy doing when I'm doing something creative. It makes me feel like I'm not sewing by myself, although I am. I am talking to the camera, I am talking to you. And please let me know if you want to see this style of video again. If you absolutely hate it and you don't like it, please let me know as well. <laughs> 
because I do want to mix things up in the channel and change the format here and there so you're not always expecting to see the same style of video. So please let me know. I will see you again soon with another sewing video. Please stay safe and you are all in my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.